Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my national open campaign and my recap videos. This one is only being filmed at 10.50 o'clock at night. Normally I'm doing this at about midnight and a half. Um, so for this round, I was paired against somebody I had played once before, only once, and uh, that's Christopher Yu. And if you don't know who Christopher Yu is, uh, I, he's probably like 13 or 14 years old at this point. Um, he's a prodigy in the United States. Uh, he's like a semi-finalist of the Puzzle Battle World Championships. He composes endgame studies. Just a brilliant player. And he's trying to become a Grandmaster. He's rated 2457. I played him once before, but I was with the Black Pieces. Now, I did a little bit of prep before the round, and I basically just realized that he plays Knight F6 and E6. And, you know, he's going to play that against my English, which I've been playing. Um, I'm sticking to the English, so future opponents in this tournament, if for whatever reason you decide to watch my recaps, I'm going to play C4. But the thing is that C4 doesn't give away a lot, because black can play a million different things, and I can also change it up. So we do exactly that. He plays all of these things. And I play this setup. And this setup is kind of the whole reason you would play the English into the Queen's Gambit decline setup. You haven't played D4 yet. You are waiting to play D4. And in a, in a, in a perfect situation, um, you actually want a position that looks like this. You, you, you completely, oop, I'm sorry, you completely delay D4. This is actually a very advanced opening concept. Um, but this is for some of the stronger players watching, potentially. And there's even variations that white can completely forego playing d4 and play like rook g1, g4, g5, h4. Like, just go totally wild on this side of the board. Um, he chooses bishop to d6 and then plays like this. So now we have a semi-slav setup. And against this, this whole concept doesn't work so well because if I try to go for it, he will just take the full center. And if, if I continue to try to be belligerent here, this just doesn't really work at all. Um, black is completely fine in these positions. So I went back to d4, and now we are playing a semi-slav. And he doesn't play a semi-slav, okay? His repertoire is Nimso-Indian, he plays things against the Catalan, but he has a lot less experience in this position. Um, I have like 10 games of Blitz experience in this position <laughs> uh, on my anonymous chess.com account. Um, and I've done a little bit of prep, but not a lot of prep. So we're basically in totally unique territory. I play queen c2, this fights for the center, and you'll notice that I've delayed the development of this bishop. I've delayed the development because sometimes it wants to go here, sometimes it goes here. I didn't remember which is which. I knew that based on this move order, he was not threatening to play e5, therefore I could go here. Whereas if he had played knight d7, um, this is not so great because there are some positions where e5 comes and he can hit my bishop here, so, um, you know, there, there's basically moments I can delay the development of my piece, but, okay, you know, I just went here, castle, queen e7, and so this position I still remembered in my notes, and the eternal question of where the hell do I put my rook, like, do I want my rook here and here, do I want my rooks here and here, I couldn't remember, I was getting very nervous, I was like, damn, you know, and I have, to, I can't just, like, play here and pass, and then it dawned on me, and I had this breakthrough moment. Thankfully, I had a coffee at 6 p.m. Um, very dangerous, by the way. But, you know, danger levels. You offset uh, being tired and potentially not sleeping till 2 a.m. with the fact that you need to beat this guy. So, um, rook to d1 is what I remembered. And I remembered that if my opponent plays this, I play e4. This is a major part of my position. At the right moment, I need to play pawn to e4, opening things up. If I wait too long, he will play c5. So, you know, for example, we can both bring our rooks, which I believe is the right way to play this position. Then he will play c5, we'll have this big ten tension in the center. He played this move, and this I think is inaccurate. because I mean, it's still completely equal, but the rook is removed from the defense of the king, and this rook has not made it to target my center. So I played this e4, and here was my point. When we have this big trade, he cannot play c5 because his bishop is not guarded. He will go here, and rather than going back, I will go to h4. And I like this for me a lot, because now I have my bishop kind of lurking behind this pawn whenever this pawn moves. And I was very happy here, like I'm going to go rookie one, I'm going to move my bishop, <clears throat> target this h pawn, and I thought I was a little bit better here. Maybe not like on the eval, but you know, I was happy. And here he played a move which I saw, but I thought was really bad. He played bishop a3. Now on the surface, this move looks like it makes sense. Because why wouldn't you want to trade my bishop, which is about to come alive? And if I take, then his queen gets over here and attacks my pawns. But I think bishop a3 is a very bad move. Because I just go here. 
And now nothing has changed in the position except my bishop is still lurking to open up and he put his bishop God knows where. Bishop a3 struck me as a as, as an, a very big inaccuracy. And maybe the machine will say like it's still plus 0.4, it's still hardly anything. But it struck me as the wrong plan. And then his next move sealed the deal. This. He should have played that without moving the bishop to God knows where. He should have played c5. And then we have a very tense position in the center. But when he did this, my creative juices started flowing. Now, of course, I can just take and keep my bishop. But then he brings his bishop back. I was like, wait a minute. I would like to open my bishop, and I would like to target the h7 pawn. And the only way to do both is to channel my inner alpha zero and play this. This forces him to take, because otherwise... I just come alive with my bishops, my rooks, etc. He takes. And now I don't take back. I play this. And I am threatening bishop f6 and queen h7. I am also threatening straight up bishop h7. So, for example, I calculated this, shutting out my bishop, but I have this. And this is really the problem of him having moved his bishop over here. His queen is no longer protected. You see that, folks? He moved his bishop out here and played this. And together, those two moves killed his queen's defense. Because now knight takes, queen takes queen. And if this, I play rook e1, I bring my bishop back, and I'm threatening queen h8. I have a very strong attack. And this is where I was started, like, I got it, like, I was getting hyped. I was like, bishop d3. He goes here. Now I attack his queen, he moves here. So we have a position where I've sacrificed the pawn temporarily to activate all my pieces. Every single piece is playing. And I locked out his bishop. I used the C move, C pawn move against him to sack and then keep these pawns frozen so the bishop cannot come back. And here I played the very simple pawn takes pawn. And there is no way for him to take back. If he takes with the queen, I check him, I win his queen with my rook. If he takes with the bishop, I have a few moves. Probably I would have gone bishop c4 to just pressure the bishop and pressure this and pressure this. And this is a very dangerous position. And if he takes with the knight, I think he was expecting this, queen e4, which looks really good because knight can't go back. I take the bishop. But I believe that in this position, yeah, he must have thought that he can hang on here with things like queen to g6 trying to get a queen trade, and if I play this move, which I did see with a double attack, he actually kind of has some counterplay. Like, if I take, he has some crazy, like, way to, you know, attack me on the king side. It's, like, very, very dangerous. And he probably thought that was what was going to happen. I was going to play queen e4 and all this. But he missed my next move, and I was so happy I saw this idea. Bishop e5, and he is dead. He's dead. Because, again, it's all about coordination. I want to put my queen here. I wanted to put my queen here and threaten a mate, but I couldn't because he controlled it. I attack his queen, and there's nothing he can do. If he plays queen to c6, then I play the very simple move, queen g3, and he is completely lost. He can't stop mate. If this, I have a dynamite move, bishop to e4. Everything is open, and everything sees each other, but it doesn't, like, it, it makes no difference. I mean, for example, rook takes rook. I have bishop takes queen. Here, 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 here. And I'm just up a queen for a rook, and I'm going to win this game. Everything opens up in my favor. So, he played here, I played here, and he played here. And at this point, I knew I was winning, but the nerves started creeping up. The nerves of, you are playing the game of your life. And it's right there. The win is right there. There, it's j it, just grab it. And my brain immediately saw knight to h4. Very simple. Knight f5 is coming. I hit both pawns. The game is over. Maybe he can go here and try to, like, paralyze me. But I can play some cool, you know, pressuring moves with my bishop, etc. And I was, like, going to play knight h4. And then the devil on my shoulder saw a brilliant tactic. Knight g5, with kind of similar intentions. And the point is that my threat is this absolutely nasty move. Defended, getting the queen away from the defensive mate, and the game is over. And in my mind, I was like, if he takes, I go here. He can't stop mate. If he plays g6, I mate him in the corner with this bishop. If he plays f5, I just take. The game is over. 
if he plays knight f6, then I just take. The game is over. So I played knight g5. And then it hit me that I just threw away one of the greatest games that I was ever playing. Because he actually can take. And if I go here and this, this is not game over. Because he can take this bishop. And now I don't threaten mate. Now I take, I lose my other bishop. And he has two bishops and I have a rook. This position is now losing for white. All he does is bring back his bishops. And I sat there after he took on g5. And I'm not, I, 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 I can't really explain it. Part of me wanted to, part of me wanted to, I mean, to, to just disappear. Like, because all of my anxieties were creeping back. You know, I don't play a lot of these tournaments anymore. And I'm on a 90 rating point losing streak. Like, I was 24-30 at some point, And then I made International Master. And it was bad tournament after bad tournament. Moments like this after moment like this. I have it within me not to play moves like Knight to G5. But I got too nervous. And I got too hyped. And I played Knight G5. And here I basically told myself, just play the best move and shut up. Queen takes G5. I'm still down a piece, but because his position is so lagging, just in movement, I still have ideas. I can still go here, threaten mate. I can still rook lift in certain situations. Position is still alive. But then again, he played a move that I didn't expect. He played this, which is just a really good move. I didn't even see that this move was possible. I looked at f6. I looked at, you know, a bunch of different things. Rook d6, sacrificing the rook for the bishop to try to save the position. He played here. And um, I had an idea here. Um, first, my, my, my idea was to play bishop f6. I thought this was really smart. This move just loses to a brutal counterattack. Rook d5. Getting out of the pin, counterattacking my queen. And uh, there's nothing I can do here. If I play something like queen g4 and, you know, he can't do anything, he just goes here. And the thing is, I can do all I want and get so close, but I have no attack anymore. So I was like, okay, well, I can't play bishop f6. Um... Can I, like, rook lift and try to checkmate him on the h-file? Let's do that. So as I say, let's play queen h5. He's going to play knight g6. I'm going to play rook e3, rook h3, and we're going to go for mate. That's, that's the plan. And I thought that was actually good for me. And clearly so did he because he didn't play knight g6. There, there is the most uh, just brutal defensive computer resource I've ever seen in my life, maybe. Like, top five, maybe. This is the right way to play. Now here, I knew he had to go here. I knew this was his best move. I knew it. And I was just going to go here, here, and continue. Here, he has a move that I didn't see at all. He had bishop c1. And if rook h3, bishop h6. I didn't see that. <laughs> and neither did he. Um, yeah, bishop c1, bishop h6 is absolutely insane. Um, that move did not even, I mean, it didn't even cross my mind. Uh, I thought this position was good for me still. I thought he had to go here, and I would go here, and we have a complex game. I, 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 or maybe queen e5. I don't know. I felt like the game was not, not over just yet. Um, because if rook h3, he can set up a getaway. But then he played a move, and he played it so confidently, I thought I'd, I was losing again. He played f5. He played this move the most... Con you know, he's been sad, frustrated the entire game, and he plays this move, he plops it on the board, he hits the clock... And I didn't even think about this move because I just thought, well, it doesn't make sense for him to weaken. Uh, sorry, it doesn't make sense for him to weaken his king on this diagonal and allow this check. But clearly, he thought that after bishop d5, he's holding. But I think he forgot. I don't like my pieces very much, so I sacked my rook. And folks, the thing here is that when you have bishops in such a paralyzing state on your opponent, you can afford to sack the rooks because you've got reinforcements. Now I'm threatening to win this and fork everybody. Like this game is far from over. Here I anticipated queen f7, at which point I would have played this move and won the knight. And then in a best case scenario, he can sack the pawn and we get a position that looks like this. When material for a moment is equal, but because all his pieces are overextended and um, you know his bishop is out of the game, I'm still playing for a win. And I, and I felt the momentum changing. And he thought for a while here and played a very bad move. Clearly the game was getting away from him now. He played this, looking for a trade of queens. 
but he just forgot that I don't have to take the knight. I don't have to take the knight and then take and collect. I can be patient. I'm so dominant here that I don't need to take anything, right? So I play queen takes f5. Um, and then he thought for a little bit longer and played queen c6. And that's when I realized that it was time to take back the honor of this being one of the best games I've ever played and not the biggest throw of my life. And um, I, played, uh, I played this move. I sacked my next rook. I sacked two rooks and a knight. The knight sack was stupid, but the two rook sacks were brilliant. And now, and at one of the nicest moves I think I've ever played, um, this. And um, he can't move. And here there's another absolutely disgusting computer move, and it's bishop to b8, which... <laughs> it's, uh, it's threatening this. <laughs> he can't do anything. <laughs> if he takes with a rook, he loses his queen. Of course, I, I mean, I would still need to beat a rook and a bishop, but oh my god. But I played this, and he can't stop it. And here he played this, and I realized I almost threw a second time, because if I take, this is a draw. This position is a draw. I don't have a way to win this without hanging my queen. If I take this, I lose my queen. And if I do this, then after takes, takes rook d8, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even winning here because of back rank mate. I was like, oh my god. And then it dawned on me. I have to stay patient again. Bishop takes. And there's nothing. There's just nothing. I'm threatening this. And if he plays rook to d8, I just take it. Because of this pin. I mean, just unbelievable position. And then I'm just winning in the endgame. So he played this. I'm sorry, he played this. And uh, the final dagger. Queen e5. And he can't take with either piece. He has to go here. I go here. He goes here, threatening mate on b1. So I have to just be patient one more time. The elastic band bishop. Hits the queen, hits this, queen defends my bishop, he plays this move. Of course, now if I take, he goes here. So I had to be precise and patient once again. And then I took his rook, and in this position, he resigned. And, um, yeah, I, I, listen, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I haven't felt this good about a chess game in a very long time. This might be one of the nicest games I've played in the last, like, five years. Classical game. Um... It's, it's really upsetting that my old bad habits kicked in right at the wrong moment because everything that I did in this game from understanding the opening slightly better than him, understanding that leaving this bishop offside until the end of the game, by the way, until the end of the game, his bishop never moved. Like, I, 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 I was very happy with the way I played this. The pawn sacrifice inspired by Alpha Zero to then activate my piece, activate everybody... Just, and then here, not to play knight h4 really hurts. It feels nice to win this game, and I'm really happy I won it. But I'm not going to lie, when after this, I was, re I mean, I, 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 I was ready to just go home. <laughs> I would say some more uh, extreme things. There's a famous interview on YouTube. You should look up Ivan Sokolov, Tata Steel. He says, it's, it's after a long game, Ivan draws versus Hikaru, actually, after being winning for a long time. And he says, I was completely winning. If I don't kill myself tonight, I'm gonna live thousand years. And then he leaves. And let me just tell you that that is how I felt after I blundered this rook takes d3 move to take my bishop and stop mate. Luckily, I was able to bounce back and maintain a degree of pressure. The chess gods were smiling down upon me, but folks, that was my fifth round game. I'm emotionally exhausted. Um, I'm very happy I won that. And this is now a good tournament. I'm four out of five. I just beat, a, you know, one of the young prodigies of the States, 2460 rated guy. I'm up some rating. Tomorrow I'll play black for some Grandmaster. I have four points out of five. And uh, I feel the love and I feel the support, y'all. If you made it this far in the recap, all of them, I appreciate you very much. And uh, let's finish the tournament strong. Peace out, y'all. Get out of here. See you in round six.